Well, Sundar Pichai, God bless you. Thank you very much for joining us. Our pleasure I've seeing you as well. I've been following you for years and your success is in absolute inspiration for all of us. Thank you and, you know, I grew up watching you on the news channel as well, so. Kindergarten, right? Uh, <laughs> I wasn't quite kindergarten, I was in college by then. Wow, okay. But, um, you know, I say that we are all inspired by you, but there's a real puzzle, two things. One, you're not a dropout. How can you be so successful? And B, you're a good guy. Don't you have to be slightly nasty to be successful? Well, first of all, I mean, uh, IIT was too much fun to actually drop out, okay. and so wasn't there a movie about it or something? Uh, well, if, yes, uh, yes. Uh, yeah, it was more like that, so, you know, I had too much fun That's to drop lovely. out. And, uh, you know, I've always felt, you know, being a good guy and doing well aren't necessarily at odds with each other, so always yeah. felt that I, in life. I also totally believe that, and I think you've reflected in your handling of Google and how you've changed it, the, the ethos here and the the kind of teamwork and enjoying everybody, people enjoying everybody's uh, company and working together, right? Yeah, I mean, I always felt, you know, even if you work 40 hours a week, you spend more time at work than the rest of your waking time. And so I've always felt it's important that it be fun, you work with people you like, and it feels like a team and you're in it together. So I've always cherished That's why that. I've talked to a lot of Google people and they say yeah. it starts from you. That's yeah. wonderful. Now. Android is one of your, look at that guy there. <laughs> but actually what I got more interested in, look at that. The droid the droids restroom for the sign. Restrooms. I mean, it's like everywhere. You, uh, Android you, you're, is your, you're close to the place where Android gets built, so. Yeah, uh. I'm, I'm told this is one of the buildings where not too many people come, so we're quite privileged, privileged to be here. And to go out into the main campus, two problems. One is security and B, you'll be mobbed. Uh, so, you know, our campus here is public space, so anyone can come and so yes. we don't restrict access here. Wonderful. I mean, yeah, that's so. just the kind of openness that you have is, is, is beautiful. I, I just want to walk in. I mean, one of the things I love about, you won't believe it, about Google Maps, it gives me, lowers my tension. Because I know I'm going to go take 42 minutes to get from here to there. If I'm a traffic jam, it doesn't matter. It's still 42 <laughs> minutes. Because you've already, in the old days, you think, oh, God, I'm getting late. But now, traffic jams are within an overall scheme of things, thanks to Google Maps. Right? Yeah, no, I, I, you, know, uh, you know, I love using Google Maps. And I, you know, in India, I think it actually works well. We are constantly very trying to make well, it better. Well. Uh, but I think... You know, traffic in India is a challenge, but so hopefully <laughs> maps makes a small difference. But it I think does make more. a huge difference, in, and tension too. It's, yeah. just, it's wonderful, actually. And a lot of it was developed in India, right, Google Maps? That's right. One of the, you know, India is where when we, we had this insight, a team from India yes. felt like it was tough to get data around maps. And so they basically said, wherever there are missing roads, we actually will let users, just like Wikipedia, right. edit and complete wow. map routes and so on. Yeah. And so that insight, really changed how fast we've been building maps since then. Well, I don't have a Google Maps quite as big as this. <laughs> but look at that. Um, this is where we are. Yeah, this is the, the picture of Google here, right here. You're looking at it from if you top. you look at the, um, the umbrellas, right? That's a clear sign, that's a Google. That's now that, the... That's where people sit and have their lunches. Yeah. In good California weather. So it's pretty nice most of the year to do that. And. Uh, one of the big things about Google campus is you've got a food place every 20 yards or something. You just get the best food in the world is here in Google. There is plenty of food. You know, we joke around. There's something called the Google 15, that when you join Google yeah. within the first year, people tend to gain about 15 pounds. Oh, so there's actually the same. Google 15. Google 15. So everyone tries to watch out. So uh, That's a good one. Oh, yeah. And let me just show you something from here and uh, in context to where we've just come from. So that's California, go right across the world and... To Arshana complex is that your... Oh wow, how yeah. do you know that? Oh, there we are. You can see oh. NDTV, that's uh, on our roof. Oh, the science. that's really nice. So we've come a long way. But wow. actually, I feel the Google campus and NDTV look very similar. <laughs> Yeah, a few umbrellas there. Are they umbrellas no, or something else? Uh, dishes. Dishes, yeah, I yeah. figured. Because we are uplinking, yeah. downlinking yeah. all our feeds and stuff. Yeah. Uh, but um, one day we'll take you around there as well. Very nice. The world is getting smaller by yeah, the day. Yeah, look at that. And I, I took a flight, Air India, yeah. exactly the same. I've been meaning route. to do that direct flight from San Francisco to Delhi. I'm excited.
Now tell me a little bit about uh, what you feel is really the next big thing which is artificial intelligence and machine learning. Uh, you know there's a bit of a controversy. You know Musk says it's the most dangerous thing. World War III will be caused by artificial intelligence and Zuckerberg says that's rubbish, don't look, um, I'm paraphrasing. What are the dangers of artificial intelligence? Look, you know, artificial intelligence for sure, uh, over the long run, is the most powerful technology humans uh, will invent. Well, and well, that's saying a lot, uh, given yeah, what we've had. That's right, and you know, so for sure, uh, I think you know, we need to have thoughtful concerns about, do we end up developing something that we cannot control? Yeah. And right. so I think, I think there are uh, deep real concerns. No. I don't think we have the answers. Um, I do believe we are still in very early days. Um, so the good news is it is still, uh, still, still far away. But I'm also equally convinced uh, it is going to be more beneficial than anything that has ever happened before. And a lot of the benefits will start playing out in the next couple of decades. And so the, the important thing here is to harness the benefits, yeah. but you know, thoughtfully developing it uh, over time so that we avoid uh, some of the pitfalls. Give me, a, give me an example of a danger. You know, because you know, with, with, with artificial intelligence, um, you know, let's say, you know, first of all. Uh, By the way, I know you like walking. That's why you don't like standing in one place. No, I, no, I used to, the, <laughs> when I was young, uh, when I was young, you know, both me and my brother would walk back and forth right. in the house all the time and so it would drive my mom crazy. So this is like, uh, uh, So I'm trying to slow down. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm slow down on walking. Sorry, I interrupted, yeah. What no, are the dangers? I mean, the, the, you know, the simplest example that gets talked about is, you know, one day these AI systems are super intelligent. They are more intelligent than humans and so they have their own free will, if you will, wow. and, and they're optimizing for something else, and, and, and they may make decisions which aren't necessarily to the benefit of humanity. Those are those far out concerns, so right? So what is the probability of, or percentage chance of World War III being caused by artificial intelligence, who kill human beings because we get in their way? Because what you do as, uh, as designers, you say you got to, to, to the robot or the artificial intelligence, you got to get from here to here, whatever happens, and you get rewards. And if a human comes in the way, you know, I mean, those are what the, is the probability? Uh, you know, look, I mean, I, you know, I have, I have a lot of faith in, uh, in, in our global systems and how we would approach right. this. And right, uh, right. I think it's important as an industry, we self-regulate and, yes. and, 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 you know, and have strong ethical approaches to how we do this. Okay. I mean, there are good examples to be borrowed from genetics and you know, over the last 30, 40 years, how the scientific community, the biological yes. community has approached this. And medical communities. Medical well, communities have done, done that. And yeah. you know, I, think, I think these are important issues, but I for sure am optimistic that you know, we can work our way through so it. There are dangers, so you're s at, at more leaning towards be very careful of dangers? Of you have to be to get this right. And I, I, you mentioned medical and genetics. Medical community affects the world and everybody in a massive way in social impact, but they do have a lot of protocols and they do have FDA and they have all kinds of restrictions. Yeah. While the beauty of the internet and companies like yours, it, it's in a free world. Yeah. So do you feel a little more self-regulation is needed for things like this? You know, we are in such early days, so part of it is you have to be careful. Yeah, yeah. Today our computers cannot learn and understand things like a third grader can, right? right? And so, uh, you know, and so that's what makes it, we have to be careful. But any industries AI is going to affect, already our regulated industries, so tomorrow if AI can shape healthcare, it has to work through the regulations in healthcare. You're working quite a lot on that. That's right. In right. fact, I see that as one of the biggest areas where the benefits will play out over the next 10 to 20 years. And you know, we had recently done work on uh, diabetic retinopathy. It's a it's a right, it's a right. cause of blindness. But right. using AI, machine learning, we okay. can detect it much better than humans can. Wow. So, getting a tool like that in the next 10 years in the hands of doctors. Think about rural places in India. You don't have, uh, you know, ophthalmologists trained and right there in those villages to help diagnose people. You know, software, AI will help any doctor oh, wow. diagnose people. 
and you know, and maybe detect blindness earlier. Well, it's completely curable. It's detected. Kind of a dream thing that AI can bring in. That's Any right. other example like that? A dreams that AI can. May I, I? You know, I do think we will need AI to even solve uh, problems like climate change over time, right? To be able to model, understand what's happening, and tackle it. Those, those will be, those will be I big. I hate to tell you something. My environmentalist friends say the biggest cause of environmental degradation are human beings. Yeah. So the robots may say, it's human <laughs> beings that are causing this problem, get rid of them and we'll have a better yeah. earth. The right, Animals will live longer. No, no, the right way to think about it, humans should use AI to make the world cleaner. Yes. And, uh, yes. and so we, we won't have this problem. Yeah. Um, in terms of AI, they, I just heard yesterday, I've been traveling around the valley and there's a massive study using AI on India. Mm -hmm. And they've checked and they look into the future and they're predicting there will be civil war in India within the next five to 10 years. Now, should AI... Based on AI? Yeah. And data, of course, big data, all the... I, I, I'm just not concerned about that, <laughs> you know, I think. I think we should worry about a lot of things, but uh, yeah. you know, scenarios like that seem far-fetched seem, to me. Doesn't it? Uh, yeah. But you know, you say this got it, some in some ways better than human beings than human beings are analyzing. So that could when you hear an AI, impartial, non-political machine with machine learning comes out of the forecast, it worries a bit, right? Of course, but you know, it, do you even get? Uh, I mean, we are still remarkably far away. You know, we are making extraordinary progress in certain things. Uh, you know, for example, AI is able to now translate. Uh, much better than ever before, right? You know, close yeah. to human level I translation. I wanted to ask you about translation. Yeah. When are you going to have simultaneous translation? And you can talk to anybody, and they can talk in their language. You talk in yours. You're, you're getting there, right? You know, look, we have, we have constantly made progress, uh, but I do think, you know, in a few days we will be talking about something by which you can wear it in your ears, and and you know, and you wow. can speak between two people, wow. and it'll make this process of translation more seamless. But I think we are a few years away from which and two people, uh, you know, regardless of the language they know, can just converse with each other. But that's and that is absolutely, you know, in line of sight. And, you know, even, even a few days from now, our first headsets will show, will take a good step in that direction. Well, uh, October the 4th, you're going to be announcing yeah. something like that? Yeah. Wow, that's amazing. Because that, that is like mind-blowing impact on, 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 on humanity because well, you can go anywhere and talk to anybody. We aren't quite there yet, but it'll take the yeah, first yeah. step in that direction. Um, on October but I the 4th, uh, then you we'll know, move on after that. Uh, yeah, and, and you know, we'll continue to build from there. Okay, one of the things while we're talking about the future, strangely enough, I don't know, maybe wrong to say strangely enough, but India has done certain things that are being used around the world. A lot of for example, you've got lighter products because we have uh, less bandwidth and less uh, speed in India. Yeah. Give us some examples of what's happening, in, uh, worked on in India that's being used around the world. I mean, there, there are several examples. Uh, you know, maps, you, uh, we talked about maps earlier. You lighter maps. Yeah. Uh, and YouTube Go, so the ability to actually cache videos offline. Right. Watch it whenever you want to. We started right. in India, we are taking it globally. We recently launched a product called Google Tez, uh, you know, yes, and, yes, and, yes. and for payments. We are able to do it in India first because of the digital payments infrastructure, right, right. Uh, which, which India has done. So we're doing it in India, and we're going to take it to the rest of the world and wow. say, look, this is how you do it. That and uh, good, yeah, yeah, very proud. Yeah, but uh, taking the whole idea of lightness, you need to have much lighter apps and lighter systems. Um, that's something a Chinese browser company yeah. discovered in India a long time ago, and they've right. got 60% of the market, according to them. Maybe it's 50 or 60, but a lot. Yeah. How are you tackling that? How are you tackling the Chinese? On Because they're smart, right? Yeah, look, mm. I mean, uh, our data shows otherwise. Uh, yeah, yeah. You know, but it's good. You know, innovation should come from everywhere. Right. And, you know, I think the way when we build products, you know, those are all good, good, good signals for us to understand, okay, where we can do better, and we've right. adapted and made, uh, made Chrome better, right? Yes, and lighter. So, lighter and faster, and so right, you know right. that's beginning to work. So, um, when we talk about AI and privacy, and um, it is a worry how much privacy uh, will 
will companies like yours guarantee? Because you, there is something called data colonization. You have so much data. You know when I eat, whatever I do, what I like. Because I see what I've done here, I see it on another. When I want to buy something, it's there. We actually don't know all that, but you know, <laughs> uh, it, you know the way I think about it is, you know, first of all, we, the biggest risk, risk for data for anyone is security. You know, getting compromised from a security aspect. Right. So right, right. just like your money is safer with the bank or something like that. Yes, yes, yes. You now we work so hard to build some of the most secure systems in the world. So we you work do. very hard to protect your data. As a company, we realize every single day, you know, users will only use us if they trust us as yes. an institution. Yes. So, you know. So how important is data security and privacy in it is, your? It is at the foundation of everything we do. Wow. You know, whenever we build wow. anything new, we start with how do we, in a foundational way, secure and, uh, the data and give users privacy. And, you know, on top of that, we do everything else. Right. And, and, and nobody can hack into it and suddenly... I mean, you work every day. You never say nobody can... I mean, yeah, security, yeah. you have to earn it every day. Yeah, and, yeah. But I think we are state of the art in terms of what we do to protect uh, you know, right. users' data and give security to our users. You know, somehow I feel, and I totally believe that and I trust Google and I use it without any hassle, but I worry about, I don't want to sound parochial, but will the Chinese or the Russians have a similar focus on privacy and security? Because we are using their browsers as well. You know, I, in generally I feel one of the things we all do, a lot of our products are open source. Yes. So people can inspect their products and, yeah. you know, so I think this is why partly we do the, do our products the way we do it. Yeah. Uh, I think it's good for all of us to be worried about security and privacy always. You didn't answer my question. Uh -huh. You are, I totally agree that you will look after, and America will probably be really at the forefront. But with this internet and data colonization, will other countries do it? Will India do it? You know, I, mean, I, I, I think so over time. Users will demand it. The, the state of what IT is doing for people, over time, just like in healthcare, you demand standards. I think users right. will demand. It will come from users. Users, and right. uh, you know, they will vote with what they use otherwise. Right? And if you don't trust it, you won't use that That's browser. Right. That's right. Right. right, browsers or phone or whatever it is, right? Yeah, but it is worrying. And we have, uh, in India, as you know, the Aadhaar card, which is, in my opinion, a revolution. It's wonderful. But there's a lot of worry that everything is connected to it. You know, your phone, your bank account, your tax, everything, which can be very positively used, but it can also be misused. How do we ensure that as users, that it's not misused? You know, I can see all the benefits that would come from a system like that. Aadhaar. Uh, yeah. uh, uh, Aadhaar. Yeah. But I think it's important because it has a uh, you know, centralized aspect to it. You have to put the right checks and balances in the system. Mm. It's no different from a constitution and a democracy and a court system. Right. You, know, you have to have the equivalent uh, in a system like other to say, you know, with that power comes a, a great responsibility right. and, you know, what are the checks and balances in the system? I hate to say it, but our politicians, I don't have the greatest faith in them. I mean, they're not the most trusted on, in India by all surveys. And, you know, to get one against each other, they could break that privacy. How does one stop that? It's a worry. You know, which is why I linked, it, it cannot be a political solution alone, right? Yes. The solution has to be, uh, you know, has to have foundations in the law and in the constitution right. and with an active judiciary to support it. That's right. how you have to design most right. of these systems. Right. I think the same thing applies to something that foundational. Yeah. So, Aadhaar, would you... Um, one or two things you would say that should be done to make Aadhaar, make us trust it. Our problem is people don't trust it. It's a great system, but people don't trust it yet. Uh, you know, I'm not fully familiar with it, but you know, yeah. I, I think in a lot of these cases, you have to generate the benefits for the users. You have to show it with the benefit. Right. So tomorrow, when I go get a driver's license, right. you know, I'm giving up some privacy. Yep. But so I do it because yeah. I can drive and I see right. the benefits of it. Right. So I think the challenge for others is you have to show use cases on top of it. Why yes. that collective benefit and the good that comes out of it Right. far outweighs, you know, the, the, the privacy you give up for it and, right. and, and then you have to put checks and balances to make sure it works well. I'm going to ask you 
to one day write five checks and balances Aadhaar needs. Not right now. <laughs> no, I'm happy to look at it, but I think you're very smart people looking at it as well. Yeah, but also you're worried that some so smart that you can't you worry about what their intentions are. Yeah. You know? But it is like uh, electronic voting machines in India. It's an area, I, I mean, I think they're the most wonderful machine. They're not connected to the internet, can't be hacked. But nobody trusts them. I mean, oh, the losers don't trust them. Yeah, it's if funny. you lose an election, it's wrong. I, I, look, at, I look at the fact, I, I, I wish we had electronic voting machines here in the yeah, U.S. Yeah. And so I think in general, you know, assuming again, uh, you, know, you do it thoughtfully from a security standpoint, uh, I can see the benefits they bring. It's wonderful. You, you can't really uh, do booth capturing anymore, which was yeah. a problem. It's much more fair. Our elections are much fairer. Um, and I, I really agree. America doesn't have it. We should export it here. It's a great machine, probably done by an IIT guy. <laughs> <laughs> Coming to another... Con oh, wow, look at this. This is... This is kind of lights up as you step yeah. on it. This Something. is like Michael Jackson, <laughs> right? We are not going to do beat it now, no, or I Billie Jean, rather. Okay, let me just find about something whether you can... Uh... Now you can... Oh, you have to be a dancer. <laughs> You'll have to work harder than that. <laughs> you don't like this song? Ah, that song seems great. That's Shah Rukh Khan, I can see. Yeah. Hello, now. I haven't seen the movie yet, but... Pretty, mo pretty woman. Yeah. So here we are. <laughs> I don't think, I don't think, I don't think, I, 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 think I think viewers in India have well, that, that would be a better options. switch off. <laughs> better options. Okay, just to talk about an uh, issue which you faced a bit of, uh, well, a controversy here about diversity. And uh, there was a person who wrote on your, you know, have such an open system here, he wrote saying that women can't make good engineers, to paraphrase. And, you sacked him. I totally agree with it. A lot of people don't agree with it. You know, there's freedom of speech, but how far does freedom of speech go? Yeah. Look, I, it's important to understand, you know, we, you know, within the context of a company, things are different than a society or a nation. Right. As a company, we have values, and we, you know, given what we do, we cherish diversity. Uh, cherish diversity. You know, we value freedom of speech. Right. But in the context of a company, you have to balance it against another important freedom, the right for someone to come and work free right. of discrimination and harassment right. and have equal opportunity to right. succeed. Right. And so I think we have to balance that. And in this case, you know, I, I, you know, I felt it had gone too far. Yes. Uh, but hopefully out of it came good debates and I think it ma ma makes people realize, uh, you know, well, you know, how important these values are. And overall, I think it was a good debate externally that played out too. Yeah, it was a great debate. Uh, I was a little surprised because the United States prides itself on diversity. That's right. I mean, look at California. It's fantastic and it's boomed as a result of diversity. And yet there were people who were saying, you know, is yeah. this a new America? Is there slight change happening? Uh, you know, the you know, U.S. also has one of the strongest constitutionally enshrined protections of freedom of speech as well. Yes, yes. And so I think, you know, and I think, you know, there is, we live in, polarized times, there's a lot of debates going on outside. Right. And so there was some conflation of what happens within a company in the context of how you interpret it outside. Mm -hmm. right. uh, but I think, you know, company, a workplace, you know, is different and we do, you know, have values and we expect our employees to stay true to that values. I think I, I totally agree with you and I think the old America, yeah. but I'm not the old, I'm even five years old, also had that socially. There was a lot of diversity, a lot of pride in the diversity, support for diversity. You know, I would, I would still say, um, you know, I'm very optimistic because if you look at every indicators, uh, mm -hmm. you know, America is more diverse than ever before. And, uh, you know, and so I think, I think that's an inherent part of the American fabric. I don't expect that to change. So, uh, I'll admit that I am an admirer of America. I think it's a wonderful education system and it's a wonderful, diverse society. Having said that, I just don't understand with this education, how did you vote Trump? I can't understand it. I'm serious. Look, I mean, uh, you know, it, it's, uh, the, the best way I would say it is, it is a democratic process. Yeah. And, and, you know, the process plays out. And, you know, I think, uh, I think President Trump clearly communicated a set of concerns which right. many Americans are feeling, right? And 
with the rapid growth we have had, uh, not all sections of society have felt it. Yes. And there have been clear manufacturing job losses for a while. Yeah. So I think he, fo he did focus on important issues, I think, yes. which played a bigger role the in the election is, outcome. His reasons or the causes of those problems were like, it's those immigrants that are doing it, but that's not the real reason. So how did America fall for it? And anyway, what, you, what he's done is made CNN had his first billion dollar profit. He's the best thing that happened to media, but don't you, you feel- You've covered politics for a long time. There's <laughs> political rhetoric in the context of an election. So you, you, know, you yeah. probably know it better than I do. <laughs> so. Yeah, and um, it just, he just doesn't quite fit in with our, my view of America. Well, I thought Obama was just wonderful, wonderful man. Uh, you're nodding, meaning you agree? Oh, I don't say. Look, I mean, I, uh, you know, I'm not here to talk po politics, no, know, right? Know, and know. Uh, you know, but I deeply respect a democratic process, and I think that's it's important we do that and not right. use democracy at times when we like the outcome. Right, and I think right. it's important you you cherish the foundation of it. So we, since we're on this jazzy floor, right? I'm going to ask you rapid fire questions. You had them before, and uh, yeah. you just handle them with your usual calm. Uh, a plum and humor. So I'll ask you 10 quick questions with one, one word answers. In the time you spend every day, what percentage of time is managing people and what percentage is looking after technology? You know, I would love to spend a lot more time on uh, technology, but at the scale of Google and what I do, right. you know, people are the most important resource we have. So I try to get great products built through people. So right. I just spend more of 50, my time 50. with people. Slightly more than 50-50, I would say, in favor of people. So 70-30? But people, uh, 60, I've heard 40. that they have to catch you out of the tech rooms and uh, say, look, there's... A I'm a product person, <laughs> yeah, and that's what I try products, to do. Yeah. But we do have a lot of people, so... So, just looking quickly at the future, uh, what's going to be your part? Google Home, or is there going to be a watch? Or how are we going to move from the phone to something else? I think the beauty of uh, what I think of as the AI first world is we don't have to decide, users don't have to decide. Computing will be there when you want it, when you get into your car, when you go to your home, working for you. So I think this notion of ambient computing, which is there ambient to help. Computing, yeah. So it can be in which the context Google of a home watch. Kind of thing. Uh, oh, the home, watch or anything. Watch, or you, know, you get into your car and it, it's built in. So explain ambient computing very quickly. For you know, today, computing meant you, know, you had to go to a device, turn it on, right. work with that device. Yeah. But to me, ambient computing is that you know, you're going about your day-to-day -day life, computing is there working for you. Right. So if I run into someone and I need to speak from Hindi to English, you know, it can happen, right? Yeah. And so we have to figure out what it is. It may be a watch, it may be a headphone. If you're in home, in kitchen, it's something like Google Home or, or you know, the TV. Any screen in front of you can help you when it needs to. So right. we will do the hard work as a user. <laughs> we'll enjoy it. That's right. That's, that's the, the way it should be. be. Yeah, that's the way it should be. Um, so what would you say, like, oh gosh, Sachin Tendulkar walks in. What would he say? He walks up to you. What would you say to him? I oh know he's gosh. your favorite. Oh, I, you know, I literally remember him, his debut series, and watching it. Around the time I started watching you, <laughs> right. so they both, you guys both lined up, and uh, you know, I, it would be a privilege. What would you say to him? Uh, uh, you know, I don't know, maybe I would try to go play with him cricket if I could do that. Right. That would be an honor. So. And just after him, uh, who's that? Oh yeah, that's Deepika Padukone, Padukone walking She's in. literally walked through here, you know, she oh, came she here and... So uh, if she walked in now, what would you say to her? Uh, you know, last time when she came to Google... And you interviewed her, right? That's right, yeah. except she lost her voice, oh. uh, I think. Uh, so she completely lost her voice, so you know, it's a bit unfortunate, but she's remarkable. You haven't told me what you'd say to her. Oh, what would I say to her? Don't uh, say I'm your biggest fan, uh, I don't which know. you are. I would ask her out for dinner. <laughs> okay, great. And I'm sure she'd, have, she'd learn a lot from that. Uh, Wonderful. Just in your daily life, what's the last YouTube video you watched? You know, you wouldn't, uh, uh, you wouldn't believe it, but uh, coincidentally, because in YouTube you have recommendations, and I do yeah. follow cricket. Yeah. Oh. Last night, uh, you know, somehow... You saw it, Deepika Padukone playing cricket. <laughs> <laughs> Not quite. There was a video recommended to me of one of Virat Kohli's fastest hundreds. Okay. I think he scored a hundred or fifty-two balls or something yeah, like that. Yeah. So I, I got to watch that. You're a fan of his. He's remarkable. Remarkable. Talent. Wonderful talent. The and Indian cricket has progressed so much. Yeah. You know, it's quite yeah. uh, the depth of the lineup. But I used to hate seeing India goes down fighting. 
you know, goes on fighting. That was the bigger, but now we win. I always used to be so worried about Sachin getting out. That's how I watched, right? right? Like tension. Because, you, know, you know, tension. But now I look at the depth of the lineup. Uh, you know, it's a lot more fun. Okay, uh, October the fourth. One hint of what's going to come. Uh, you know what I mentioned earlier. Maybe you, you will see an update to our Pixel phones and and our home products. But as an accessory, we are also working on you know what I think of as uh, magic earphones. Wow. Uh, you know something which can do a little bit more than what normal headphones can do. Sounds bloody exciting. I'm, I'm going to be watching. You did a beautiful uh, talk that the last one. Yeah. Was, yeah. Looking forward to. It. I'll be there this time too. Yeah. I wonder whether you practice a lot for it because it just came to you like. You've done it for years. No, it's you know, it's what I do for work every yeah, day. So I get to talk inside. about it, and yeah. so it's 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 like you doing this interview. No, no, you're actually almost interviewing me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, two more questions on the on the rapid fire. What's a bad day for Sundar Pichai look like? You know, I uh, I I get so excited coming to work. Uh, the choice of what we can do at scale. Yeah. So. Normally, I'm like a kid in a candy store. Oh, you know, bad day just means, you know, I didn't get to do what I wanted to do that day or it was just a busy day. But, you know, I have the perspective to know that, you know, there's nothing like a, a very bad, bad day. Bad day means you haven't had enough time with the tech guys, right? That, that, I can that's, feel that. That, that, that. That's about it, yeah. You can't build a product. If I just spent it in meetings and I didn't deal with any product reviews or something like that, yeah, I would call that a bad day. So you have to ward off all these people who are taking you to meetings rather than allowing you to build products. Yeah, More or well, less. Good yeah. for you. Wow, that's an IIT backup. When you put your head on the pillow at night, what concerns or worries you? Uh, I'm serious. About that. No, it is. Yeah. You know, I think. Um, you know, I think we are. You know, historically, the world has progressed to, to a place where, you know, we have a more global framework and countries are coming together. Right. I think there are recent forces which are pulling countries apart. Yeah. You know, so. Yeah. Uh, you know, while I'm optimistic, uh, you know, but it's something I worry when I put my head in the that yeah. do we leave the world a better place for our children than when we as a generation. Like, uh, what we left for you is lovely pollution, but we left you democracy. Oh, we left, you know, I, uh, you know, I think our, the generation before us in India sacrificed a lot to give us the life yeah. we had. Unfortunately, we came in then and then gave you pollution. <laughs> That's my trouble. Last question is, um, what do you miss about not living in India? I mean, you live in paradise. We're going to show some shots. This weather is perfect. Location of no pollution here. But what do you miss about not living For there? For me, you know, I always felt I miss the people, the vibrancy, the noise. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's so quiet around here. <laughs> so I, I, every time I go to India and I come back, that's what I miss. And everything really? feels silent. So I miss the people, the vibrancy, the life, the colors, and the sounds of India. And when we talked about uh, democracy and, and we're talking about the diversity of India. So the two big D's, the wonderful, what's wonderful about India, the democracy and the diversity. Are you a little worried that diversity may be changing a bit? There's not enough focus, or support for diversity like you have here? I mean, Google has, and of course, America too. You know, I think one of that, right, you know, it's amazing when, uh, you know, I think, if I look at all the difficult times India has gone through, something about India, the scale of the people and how distributed it is, the different states and the different cultures. Right. So the only way India can work is by somehow keeping it all together. And there is this magic, it has figured out a way to do it over time. So I think, yeah. you know, I have faith in that system, something deeper than all of us, I think which will keep it together for a long time. And people might try to uh, affect the diversity, but you feel there is a... I think the forces which will bring it together are, you know, far bigger than wow. anything which can pull it apart. That's why you've always been an optimist, right? That's I, why you build crazy ideas and they become reality. Yeah, I'm an optimist, but I think it's important to remember if you look at the world through any arc of time, you know, things have gotten much, much better, so. Yeah, so when in your time, just last, say you were an IIT, at that time religion didn't matter, caste didn't matter, you didn't know what people's caste were at that time, did you? I mean, you know, to be, to be very clear, when, you know, when we were in IIT too, you know, I'd grown up, there were sectarian riots uh, in Hyderabad, and, you yeah. know, and so I think we've always had to work through difficult challenges as a country, and, yeah. uh, you know, so I think it's important to... Focus on what keeping matters. together, yeah. focus on the diversity. If it's India, I would focus on creating economic growth, creating jobs, and creating prosperity. Uh, and driving but, GDP growth higher so that more people yeah. can be better off. But not at the cost of diversity. Right? No. 
uh, you know, but I think doing that is what will prevent, you know, uh, you know, other forces taking hold of people. One thing that does worry us, and I wonder what your answer to that is, social media in India is acting now as a negative force. There's a lot of hate, there's a lot of rumors, there's false news. How do you tackle that? How should one tackle that? Yes, Google, we are particularly uh, focused on that. You know, search has always been about trying to give the uh, you know, most truthful representation of uh, anything. So you have we ways can... to filter that? We have, uh, and, and, and it's an area where we use machine learning very, very uh, importantly. We recently launched uh, from our jigsaw team an effort called Perspective, uh, so, which actually analyzes online posts for toxicity, hateful speech, can, and can right. actually moderate it out. So the New York Times now uses it for their comment section and so on. Wow, so I think, cool. I think we all have to work hard to make sure these tools get used for the good of humanity, yeah. not otherwise. And, and it is possible because at the moment it is a big worry in India. Social media is just hate. You know, I, I think, you know, I mean, I think it's something we all focus on it and thoughtfully work hard to make it better. Well, I hope we have the same solutions that you brought here and one, built this wonderful place over the years. I want to ask you, when you're in your interviews for CEO, what do they ask you? I know your interview to join Google, where you couldn't answer three, <laughs> three interviews you were. But oh, here, I, for CEO, they must have gone through a process. What did they ask you? I mean, it wasn't a formal interview no, process. because I, they knew about I mean, it, of course. I worked, worked uh, with, uh, with uh, Larry and Sergey and the founders yes, for yes. a long time. Right. Uh, you know, so you know, probably it's a question to be asked of them. So, well, what did they ask you? What did anything unnerve you? You know, uh, both Larry and Sergey are always focused on like what we can do, right. uh, something that's ambitious and would really meaningfully make something better for users. So most of our conversations are about focused that. on how we can do things to change things for better. Uh, so right. we rarely talk about other things. And when did they tell you? And how did they tell you? Uh, you know, it was just a thoughtful conversation over a period of time, and you know, in terms of. And you know, it was going, but you weren't hundred percent sure. See it. it wasn't a discrete step as much as right. you know, as form, right. you know, formally. Thoughtful. But there were many in the running. Yeah, you know, we we had talked uh, internally. It was much more about you know, I think it was more of a natural transition. You know, I was running product. Give us before. one quote, memorable quote of what happened during that, and then when you became CEO. Um. You normally forget bad things. You have to. You remember all the lovely things. <laughs> you know, I mean, maybe you call. Yeah, it's almost like I, I thought I was doing the job. So when I, you know, when they told me, you know, in some ways it was a process. It was more continual than discrete. So I actually didn't even stop to think about it. You know, I was back at work the next day, continuing to work, and so it was more a bigger news externally than how right. how it played out internally. But one one quote. Ah, uh, quote about it. Uh, I don't know, maybe nothing, nothing. Nothing stands out. Yeah. But many congratulations. I'm sure they came up to you and said, congratulations, you're the next CEO. Yeah. And I, you've done a great job as CEO. They must be telling you that now. Yeah. Uh, well, thank you for taking the time. and Thank you. In, and I appreciate it. And there are about 20,000, sorry, 60,000 people waiting for you. There's about 60,000 Google. It's about 70,000. 70,000. Oh, I'm sorry, one week late. I'm uh, one week out of date. <laughs> Thank so, you very much indeed. God bless you. Roy. Thank you very much. Yeah. Good luck with everything. Thank you, thank yeah, you very much. It. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers.